Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And gentlemen, I, I do appreciate you being here, um, but I, I have to admit I am a little bit disappointed in the in the written testimony that you have provided and and your comments in in direct um, support or opposition of the bill are very they're so nuanced I can't tell, um, which is not usually a, a good sign. But um, and we've, we've got a second panel here that I think speaks very clearly to some of the issues that have been raised in, in S 1600. So I, I'd, I'd like, uh, Dr. Danielson, for you to, to, to give me a little bit more. Your comments, in, both in writing and what you have affirmed here, is the department is currently reviewing it. Uh, you've got no specific comments on the legislation at this time. We introduced the bill back in late October. We certainly gave plenty of notice to the department that we were planning this hearing and, and asking for, for folks to come in and testify. It's not a lengthy bill. It's only 40 pages long. Are you saying that, that nobody within the department has really had an opportunity to review and to be able to then provide comment? You know, critical materials is an area that uh, the department and our interagency task force takes very seriously. Uh, I think uh, we've evidenced that at DOE by publishing these critical materials reports the, the last Right, but what about this bill that has been out there now for, for three months, this 40-page bill? Um, if critical minerals are so important, why have you not formed a, an opinion one way or another that you would like to relay publicly? Uh, you know, at this point, the DOE is reviewing it. Um, uh, we don't have any formal administration comments on the bill itself. Uh, I would welcome a request, if desired, for technical assistance uh, related to this bill uh, to the Department of Energy. Well, I don't know that there's any technical assistance. I think you guys just need to read the bill and let us know whether it's something that, that you can support or not support. Everything that you have conveyed here in the hearing about the significance, the importance of critical minerals in our supply chain is certainly all fine, well, and good. And we're talking about what you're doing within the department to ensure that uh, we're focusing on recycling, reuse, um, the other priorities. but. We need to move a bill in order to advance some of this, so we would, we would greatly appreciate uh, DOE weighing in. Uh, Dr. Minor, your testimony begins by stating that the department supports the goal of facilitating the development of critical minerals in an environmentally responsible manner. You repeated that a couple times. Do you think that enactment of this bill would, would further enhance that goal? Yes, we have read the bill in detail, and we are thrilled and delighted at a bill that focuses on mineral resources. And I, as the head of the Mineral Resources Program, am particularly thrilled and delighted that the bill focuses on this critical need for the nation. And so, as I stated very clearly here, the department is supportive of the goals of this bill, and we are glad to see it introduced. I'm thrilled and delighted. Thank you. Let me, let me ask both of you. Um, in uh, in the bill itself, we, where we establish a process to, to designate which minerals are critical, we, we require that the list not exceed 20 in total. And I have to confess that that's a somewhat um, arbitrary number. The, the question to both of you is whether or not you think we have the right number. Should we be higher? Should we be lower? Does it make a difference? Your, your input here. Dr. Minor, you can go first. Um, this is a, a subject that we spend a lot of, of time on. So we are the, the nation's chief compiler of this type of information, and so we've given a lot of thought to it. As you have uh, pointed out, there is no specific number that is, is absolutely correct. Um, if you look at the various estimates that have been made around the world, so the European Union has, has looked at this and came up with a list of 14 elements in their study in 2011, and then they have redone that study and now expanded it beyond 20. And so it's very clear that reasonable people could come up with lists of different lengths. And I think the actual length of the list is less important than focusing the nation and the world's attention upon mental resources a as a subject. So we are comfortable with um, the number that you have put forth. And we recognize that it's not an absolute number. And we understand the reasoning behind it. OK, good. 
good. And uh, I'll, yeah. I'll add that uh, in our DOE, you know, detailed uh, DOE critical uh, materials assessment strategy, we looked at 16 separate uh, materials that were identified by our stakeholders uh, and narrowed that down to five to seven just within the Department of Energy uh, space. Uh, and so um, if we look at our, our interagency level, uh, a number uh, in the, on the order of 20 uh, plus or minus seems like a reasonable number. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.